Greetings, cellists, and welcome back to the Cello Zone for episode three of Setup Madness. Today we're finally getting to the good stuff. We're going to be changing out some strings and getting to the heart of what this series is all about. To be changing the setup and then making some observations, commenting on what we like, what we don't like, what do we hear as we change the strings, how does the instrument respond differently with the bow, with the resonance, tone, pitch stability, etc. And today we're going to be switching from the Perpetual Soloist Medium A to the Yargar Superior Medium A string. For episode 3, we're still going to have the Perpetual Soloist Medium D string as well as the Cadenza G and C strings on. Now the Perpetual Soloist Medium A string has a tension of 17.6 kilograms. And we're going to be switching to the superior A string from Yargar, which has a tension of 18.5 kilograms, which is actually the same as the Perpetual Soloist Strong Edition. I will say tension-wise, the Perpetual Soloist Strong A string was very different from the medium A string. And I think the Yargar superior A string um, has even more flexibility than the medium gauge soloist A string, even though it has the same tension as the perpetual soloist strong gauge. I'll be mentioning tensions as I go through the series in the middle of changing setups, so you'll hear me talk a lot more about which strings from other brands have the same equivalent tensions, or maybe even in this case, like I said, the Yargar soloist A string has the same tension as the soloist um, strong gauge perpetual string, but um, it feels totally different. So I'll be making a lot of observations about those types of differences, just so you have an idea of how the string might respond on your instrument. I grew up playing on the Yargar Classic medium A and D strings, but I haven't really had them on my cello since about 2012. So I was really excited to go back to Yargar and try the newer superior strings. I heard really good things about them. I've liked how the A and D string especially have sounded in other people's demos. And I really just wanted to give it a try in my cello to see how different they felt, what their tone was like, what their response was like, and if it still felt like home to play on these Yargar strings. If you haven't seen episodes one and two, just a reminder, this is gonna be older footage that wasn't filmed on this new camera, so just be prepared for that. Um, episode three is Yargar Superior A string, and episode four is going to be changing to the Yargar Superior D string. So let's dive into this episode. I have a lot of thoughts that I share as I switch to this new A string. Check it out. First string I wanna change is the A string, because I feel like the A string is probably not gonna last too much longer. This is again the medium gauge perpetual A string soloist um, and I'm surprised honestly it's it's a thin enough string that I'm surprised it lasted 10 months without breaking and I think if I had done a lot more peg tuning it probably would have broke earlier. But um, these strings I gotta say, coming from playing gut strings for the past four or five years, and then switching to the perpetual soloist strings, it was set it and forget it. I didn't touch the pegs at all. I only a little had to do a little bit of fine tuning. That was it. They mostly stay in tune. I barely have to touch the fine tuners even, just a little bit. We're gonna change the. Perpetual Medium Soloist A, which is 17.6 kilogram tension for the, um, there's a nice big case for that. We're gonna change it to the Yargar Superior Medium A. And the Superior Medium A is 18.5 kilograms of tension, which is the same as the Soloist Strong Gauge of the Perpetual Soloist String. And I really liked the Soloist Strong 
for perpetual and it brought out a lot of nice overtones um, and so I'm just gonna look at it to see kind of what the thickness is like and it looks like the superior A string is a little thicker but I also know that the uh, superior D string is pretty thick too and uh, so this is gonna feel a little bit weird probably but I just want to see how much of a change we get in the response of the other strings just by changing to that heavier gauge A string. Clean the string up a little bit, just in case I want to put it back on. It's kind of ready to go then. A perpetual medium A, 17.6 kilogram tension, which is the same as a lot of strings. So same as the Kaplan medium A string. Same as the Passione Light A string, same as the Larson um, Original Soft, um, and it's about the, uh, the same as the Yarger Superior Dolce Soft string. Um, a little bit less than the Yarger Classic Medium A, and uh, it's the same as the Versum Original A string. So 17.6 is a very popular tension, and I will say that the Kaplan medium A string at the same tension is actually a quite similar A string except the Kaplan A is a little bit lighter under the fingers and a tiny bit brighter. The This perpetual A string was darker but they feel pretty similar overall. Um, I had a pencil once upon a time. I love the blue, that light blue for the Yagar strings. Blue's my favorite color, so I love seeing that blue. You can hear there a tension change, so all my strings went out of tune. Now the Yagar strings, you know, they have a very different kind of winding. Um, it's almost like uh, I can, see, it's like wider straps of winding that I can really see and feel. So there's a rougher texture to the Yargar A and D strings. Um, and it's a much smoother singular texture for the um, perpetual soloist string. Thicker wrapping too. Just keep making sure everything is set up right. That you've got a good secure winding going on. And that everything's in the groove, lined up how it's supposed to. Adjust it as you go. Well that came up to pitch pretty quick. Dragging my finger. Superior A is not as bright or loud as I thought it was going to be because the perpetual soloist A string at the same tension, 18.5 kilogram tension, um, was much uh, bigger sounding. This is... Okay, the sustain is just dying now. So that harmonic from the G string is being activated by this. 
G in fourth position. And so there we, we have, we can hear the effect of having a more tension on the A string gives you more sustain from your harmonics and the interior reverb of the instrument. Okay, so if you want more sustain, you can start by doing a heavier gauge soloist A string as your first step to see if you can get that sustain. Um, but what I'm surprised is the Yargar A, you can hear is a little louder in the, that register than the perpetual was. about to say is that the Yargar Superior A medium is much easier to press down to the fingerboard surprisingly than the perpetual soloist medium A string which is less tension. I just had the medium A string on 17.6 kilogram tension <laughs> and the Yargar is easier to press down but it does have that textured string winding which feels a little bit sticky, and I'm getting kind of caught on it. Now, a very nice change is that I'm getting less wolf tone on my G string. So, um, just a second ago, uh, playing on the same setup except for the perpetual medium soloist A string, um, I ha all had much more wolf tone on this G string at F natural. But now I can play it without a wolf tone. And all we changed was the A string. I gotta say the Yargar Superior A has a little warmer tone and a softer tone. It has less of a, an edge to it. And I actually used to find the Yargar Medium Classic A's a, and the D's a little hard to press down back in the day, but this feels surprising easy to press down. I was expecting it to be difficult. Did I mention that I brought it up to pitch and haven't touched it so I brought it up to pitch once and haven't touched it and it's in tune that's nuts for me I mean the the new steel strings are on another level when it comes to pitch stability um, especially like I said uh, broken record but coming from gut back to steel that's like obviously the big advantage is pitch stability so um, it just, uh, I'm so used to breaking in the strings over the course of a day or a week with the gut strings that I'm not used to this whole thing of tune it up once and it's ready to go. Um, it's pretty nuts. Let's see how it sounds with the black hair broke stick. <laughs>
actually like the sound of the D string better with the Yargar um, Superior A. I think the tone is nicer. <laughs> So this is going to be really nice to play on for the recording session because I I have this um, theme which is like a La Folia um, kind of riffing on the La, La Folia progression. It's a little altered. to it the this uh, got a little more character to it with that a string it's nicer so uh, the D string doesn't feel too thin it, it's almost the same kind of feeling uh, it's just a tiny bit thicker just a tiny bit this is a, a pretty nice setup I actually would use this I think over the perpetual a the medium the the perpetual soloist heavy a i think i still would like on this setup okay everything looks to be in order pretty easy on the install pretty nice <laughs> For me to keep that A string pinned down and the D string I can feel the difference where I'm having trouble pressing down the D string it's it does the perpetual strings still do spring back up to their spot like the D string is still springing back it doesn't have the resistance against the bow like it used to but it does spring up pretty upright to its position um, but they are more susceptible to wavering in pitch as they've um, become old and lost their spring, that push resistance, that pushback. Um, so pressing down the string and keeping it down has been difficult, and it's, you know, I have some issues with my elbow here, so it's a little taxing to keep the string crunched down. Um, so far, I'm I'm very happy with the Yargar Superior A. I I like the Yargar sound on my DNA string, and I haven't had it for a long time because I've been trying other setups. 
And this is a vast improvement, I think, over the classic A string. It's more flexible, easier under my fingers, um, warmer tone, because of the Yager A and D classic used to get a little bit too much of a nasal tone out of my instrument. And I can hear it's got a nice kind of warmth to the A string. I hate shrill A strings, um, nasal A strings. I don't like that sound. And I can already tell it's going to sing really nice in the higher registers. Um, already, just a little bit, I can see that it opens up in the high end. It's not even broken in yet, and it's already got a thickness there and a nice amount of resistance, but not too much. I can keep the string down comfortably all the way down the fingerboard. It feels really good. So because of that, I am going to change to the superior D string. Now this will be interesting because it has considerable, uh, considerably more tension than the perpetual D string does. But, but before we do that, let's do a little recap on equivalent gauges and equivalent strings, tensions. So we've got the Yargar Superior A string, medium gauge, 18.5 kilogram tension, and which is the same as the perpetual per, uh, which is the same as the perpetual soloist strong gauge the larsen original strong gauge the magnacore a string is 18.4 kilogram tension so just the regular magnacore a um, the il canone both the a strings of larsen's il canone line are 18.5 tension and the yargar classic heavy is 18.5 kilogram tension. The Yargar Superior Medium A String. What did you all think? Did you like the sound of it? Share your thoughts in the comment below. I would really like to hear from you and know, have you tried this string before? Do you currently have it on your setup, on your cello? Are you interested in trying this string? If so, what's holding you back from purchasing it? Keep in mind this is the string when it's new and I will be giving you more updates in future Setup Madness videos, especially if I decide to change from this string to some other string, I'll be letting you know why. I'm really curious to hear from you. Put it in the comments below uh, if you have any experience with this string. Um, what was it like on your instrument? How did it hold up over the course of its lifetime as you played it out? I'm curious to see how long this string lasts for, but so far I'm really, really liking this string. It's breaking in very nicely, and um, the A and the D string for the Yargar Superior do change significantly depending on what low strings you have paired with them. And a side note, I was mentioning about the texture of the winding of the string, how it felt a little bit like catching or a little bit grippy. Um, don't worry. That wears off after a few sessions. I noticed that with both the D string and the A string, and maybe that's something that the old Yargar classic strings were like that too, and I just kind of forgot about that surface texture. But it does wear out, and now the strings feel really nice and smooth, and I can glide and into my notes, no problem. Um, portmento and all that sort of stuff feels really good. This episode was a lot of fun, and as you can see, I got pretty excited to be changing a string finally because I hadn't changed any strings on my cello, which is really hard to believe, for maybe that 10 months or so. And, um, and that's the longest I had gone without changing a string on my setup. But that's also a testament to the Pirastro Perpetual Soloist strings that I was able to successfully stay on those strings for about a year and not touch my setup and not have the madness. Um, so, I think that's an important thing to state, that I was able to play and on that perpetual set and be happy for pretty much a whole year and get the flexibility I needed to be able to play a bunch of different styles of music. I know these are pretty long videos, so I'm putting tons of timestamps in here so you can just jump around the episode and find the thing that you really need to hear or see. I hope you found this useful. Um, again, I really want to hear from you in the comments about your setups. Have you used this string? What do you think of it? Um, I can learn from you as well. It's kind of an open platform to share about our experiences. I really like the comment sections, and I'll try to interact as much as possible. 
Uh, that's it for episode three. Next time in episode four, we're going to be changing to the Yargar Superior D string. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming out um, next week. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, comment, share, all of that stuff that's going to help the algorithm. That's also going to help encourage me to keep making these videos, to keep the series going, and to grow the channel. I'll see you next time in episode four of Setup Madness, right here in the Cello Zone.